Okay, so we are here to talk about the greatest Netflix property intro. The, the, well, this is the intro. This is the greatest Netflix property that they have ever had. Would you say that? Would you? What uh, What show would be better than this when it just comes to Netflix properties? Like, I wouldn't put Stranger Things. I, well, actually, I would put Stranger Things, but it just didn't appeal to me. But I would put Stranger Things above it. But I would say at least top three. We haven't introduced what the show well, okay. we're talking oh, well, about well, 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 is. This is the intro. Top three. Top three, and it's not number three. At least. Uh, my top three Netflix shows, probably number one, Carol on Tuesday, Dragon Prince, and then Cobra Kai. Okay, uh, and if you don't know, welcome back. We are here for another edition of the Daily Planet uh, Review Podcast. I am your host, Marcus Flowers, a.k.a. Flo, a.k.a. Call Me What You Want. Just don't call me lazy. And, of course, I am joined by my co-host. Y'all know who it is. Metro Meta, he who shall not be named. And uh, it's cool to be here. Yes, uh, we are back for another edition, of course, of the Daily Planet Podcast. And if you listen to our intro, you know what we are here for. We are not here to play games. There is no mercy in this dojo. And like always, Cobra Kai never dies. And we are here to discuss the 32 episodes of Cobra Kai. Uh, Let me just read a synopsis. So, decades after the 1984 All-Valley Karate Tournament bout, a a middle-aged Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence find themselves martial arts rivals again. Now, before we really jump into the uh, nooks and crannies of this, what would you give Cobra Kai on a scale of 1 to 10? I know you just finished it. I finished it this past week. What would you give the overall series out of 10? 8. 8 out of 10. I actually would give it a 9 out of 10. I actually like the Cobra Kai series more than the original Karate Kid series. Well, let's get some background on this. So, Cobra Kai, it was originally a youtube original right and then i guess they probably because they've sort of buried that i think they gave it to netflix and they made a season three can you tell the difference in the budget compared to the netflix and the youtube because the first two seasons were made by youtube oh uh, so yo no i definitely can see the difference just because even like the brightness and the lighting and even some of the uh, storytelling is very more uh the story t- the storytelling was great all all throughout but even just like the third season, it really just like popped off, and even just leaving everything on a cliffhanger, that's sort of something like what Netflix would have done. So, uh, but yes, yeah, so let's just start from the very, very beginning. So we find Johnny Lawrence, who is a loser at the point. He's basically a drunk. He's down bad, and he's driving, and he sees Larusso Automotives. And if you don't know, LaRusso kicks the competition. And, you know, I feel this guy's pain because, well, I don't feel his pain, but I can only relate to a person becoming a millionaire off of something that they did to you nearly 40 years ago. Just imagine, just imagine somebody punch you in the face 40 years ago and then them becoming a millionaire off of it. And even trademarking their kick, their move on that. Yeah, that's mad disrespectful. Like, I don't know if it's disrespectful because it happened. But at the same time, like, I can see why he'd be down there. I can see why you would feel like the world is against you when you were supposed to be the guy. And then a guy and then another person comes in, beats you. And then they go on to gain notoriety off of that. Well, I think it's the thing that I find the most interesting was they they sort of swapped uh, life paths because right. Johnny was like the rich kid in the original, and now he's the like 
the broke one who's on the streets. Right. Whereas Daniel's son was the poor one, and now he's the rich one. It, here's my thing about, and we'll get into, let, let's start with season one. Yeah, that's How did it. you feel about that season? Uh, season one, I liked it. We really saw like a, like you talked about how they were reverse roles. It really was a reverse role to the point where Daniel was trying to get uh, Cobra Kai shut down. Yeah. And uh, that's just like a stark comparison to what he was taught by Mr. Miyagi. Like how everybody lives peaceful and there's an ecosystem there for everybody. And we see uh, Johnny become his own Mr. Miyagi in a sense to Miguel. And we see him teaching Miguel and we see him like we see his Cobra Kai. And even at first it took him owning his own Cobra Kai and for him to realize that like his vision of Cobra Kai isn't wasn't the correct vision. His original vision of Cobra Kai or the Cobra Kai from the 80s wasn't the correct vision of what it should be. Like Cobra Kai was just like uh no mercy, um destroy everything, kill everything, and that even comes back to bite him at the end because his students not only learn from him but they're not only are they contributing to Cobra Kai with their uh, characteristics and their feelings, but they're also taken away, such as like a student does from a teacher. Well, the thing that I I liked was they showed you why the students needed Cobra Kai. Because right. l- let's talk about some of the kids that they added to the show, which I think that was a smart idea. It was very easy for them to just be like, oh, we're just going to ride on like johnny and uh danny but they added uh students and they showed how those students changed like you have hawk who was like being bullied and he really one he turned into a bully but you could see how just doing cobra kai gave him the confidence he needed in order to be a better person he got a new name uh he was able to get a girlfriend which he's still like jealous over now when he lost her but you saw the divide between Hawk and uh, his friend Brandon as Hawk became this cool person and Brandon... Well, not even... Uh, not a cool person per se, but just like when uh, Hawks became indoctored in Cobra Kai, uh, he felt like Brandon was riding his coattail. And that's what got Brandon mad. Because remember, in that first... Their first um, lesson, or whatever you want to call it, um, Brandon gets punched in the face. Yeah. And he's like, yo, this is nuts. Like, what am I doing here? Like, getting punched in the face. I thought I was here to learn to defend myself, but you're not defending me. You're just bullying me even more. And so, uh, and so we're seeing that as well. And how, uh, we see Miguel, who, he wasn't necessarily a loser, but he was a da- well, actually, he was a loser because we were introduced to Miguel by him getting basically beat up. Yeah, and so like he's beat up by the jocks, and it took Johnny to come in and beat up the jocks for him, and then that connection right there, and even the relationship between Johnny and Miguel uh, flourished over this first season. Like, it went from more of a like teacher student to a like father son type of situation where it's like even Johnny was learning certain things and how to act from Miguel. And I think the thing that the, cause the climax for season one was uh, Miguel winning the, what was the tournament? The all state, the all Valley, all Valley tournament. And I really enjoyed watching. Like, I think the first moment was like, Oh, this show is cool. Was when they saw was when Miguel beat up his bullies, like when he just uh they attack him and he's in the lunchroom. They have that whole fight, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. Um, and so I think Miguel is probably one of the strongest characters in the show as uh, far as storytelling goes. Okay, as, as far, far as, as story, like, story, story, okay, as far as he we, he regresses that last season, but yes, as far as um storytelling goes, we do see Miguel go from this shy, nerdy loser to a confident young man. Mm-hmm. And we only and we see it in like the matter of what's what's like a year. And so we see him grow and we see him 
evolve and develop and not only uh, listen and not only listen to what his sensei is telling him, but he applies that method into his own life. Yeah, I think the thing that I enjoyed the most. How do you feel about Sam and Miguel? So I so I liked Sam and Miguel that first season. Like I I knew it was going to end badly, but I really enjoyed them that first season because they were uh, innocent and their just like connection was so uh, natural. Mm-hmm. And so we saw them uh, grow and but as like, cause Sam wasn't on the Sam wasn't on like the whole karate kick until like the very end when Miguel was like yo when he kind of took Cobra Kai too far to his heart. And he started to lose himself. And we see that and we see that battle with all of the characters throughout this whole uh show. It's the it's the meaning of it's the lesson of balance. And so that's really key but throughout this whole three series we're seeing Miguel and even towards the end where he was more Cobra Kai and less Miguel. And we're seeing that balance and when that and when it started to tip towards Cobra Kai and less towards Miguel. We see the effect that it has like with his relationship with Sam and how she wasn't at his final and how it took um and how when he beat Robbie and how and what he did to beat Robbie. Yeah. I think that there is that whole conversation and we can have this later on when we get into season three about the origin of Cobra Kai. Right. Uh, but let's talk about season two was probably one of my favorites. No, let, let's stick on, let's stick on season one real quick. Um, uh, because, uh, we didn't talk about Robbie. Robbie's uh, a frustrating character. Why do you say he's frustrating? Because I feel like Robbie is someone who they all, everyone's trying to help him, but I feel like he's someone who just doesn't want to be helped. Uh, I, I, but see, here's the, here's the thing at the same time, but like, you got to think, Robbie is a 15-year-old whose father was never around. His mom was never around. Uh, he's basically had to fend for himself. Uh, we're seeing him go in and out of school. Not even in and out. He wasn't even in school. He, he spent so, one day in school and then got kicked out. Like, and so we see, uh, we're seeing all of this happen and transpire. And we see Robbie originally go to LaRusso Auto as like, yo, I'm going to just mess with I'm going to like screw with my dad's head because he knew the hatred the from Robbie's point of view the hatred that Johnny had for Daniel was bigger than the love that Johnny had for Robbie so he said okay if I could do this maybe it will be able to break my dad and it's again it's the uh, theme of balance and so Robbie and once Robbie was in uh the LaRusso autos and learning the ins and outs and even started karate and him knowing, like, yo, this is, like, wrong what I'm doing. Like, even though, like, he started off with bad intentions, but as he grew as a person during that short period of time and learning from uh, LaRusso, he was like, okay, this is wrong. This is all about, it's all about balance. It's all about doing the right thing and putting my best foot forward. And we see that happening when um, his, like, I don't, what what would you call his, like, criminal friends, like, they were criminals, mm-hmm. but like they were his friends, but then they like were also his bullies. They were like, like it was, it was, it was a, a complex situation. situation. Yeah. It was interesting. and so when they're like, "Yo, give us the uh, the passcode, and then we'll get in, and uh, we can steal like the stereos and stuff." And he's like, "Nah, don't even. You're not even gonna do this to my uh, place of work." And it's like, and even that lesson it was like he wasn't only defending. Russo Otto, he was defending himself as a person and saying, yo, I'm not that same person anymore. I'm not that same guy that y'all found and had to help out. Yeah, I think when it comes to me and I think about uh, Robbie, I'm thinking where he was somebody, because the whole conversation is around karate, and Robbie's somebody where the karate was something that he learned but I'm wondering if he should have learned it from his father. See, now I get that, but I don't think that Johnny was in the right state of mind to teach Robbie karate. Just like we see we see the state when we're introduced to Johnny, we see the state that he's in. 
Like, he wasn't good father material. Like, he, it's like, he wanted to be there, but he couldn't be there. He wanted to be there in, like, emotional, physically, uh, spiritually, but he just couldn't be that person. And it took him having Miguel under his wing and Miguel pushing him to have more humanity and less Cobra Kai in him to realize, okay, if I could do this for a random stranger's son, I could try to do that for my own. And as we see, he's trying to bridge the gap between uh, Robbie and himself, but it's not working because LaRusso's right there. And we're seeing that his hate for LaRusso is not is nowhere near as much as his love for Robbie, but he has a hard way of articulating that just because that because LaRusso, that's the thing that sets him off. And we see that throughout the entire series, like literally from episode one to literally episode 32, we see that uh, LaRusso is his uh, is his time bomb. That is what sets him off as a person. For me, um, looking back at season one, which was actually pretty good, I honestly didn't notice, the because we were binging, I didn't notice the transition from season one to season two. Right. With the introduction, introduction of, what was his name, the... Old sensei of Cobra. Uh, I don't remember his name. I'll look it up. All right. But just having him come in and wanting to be part of Cobra Kai, I think watching Cobra Kai grow was something that was very fun because they had a lot of characters that they had to keep track of in there. You had Miguel. You have Sam. You John, have John Kreese. John, John Kreese. Yeah. Uh, you have Miguel. You have Sam. And so I think... Watching them build out slowly, build out this cast right. of characters because there's some characters like Brandon. He's very big in season one and season three, but like he was minor in season one. Like you didn't really see him. It was mostly Hawk. And I think getting this transitional cast was very just. It was very good how they did that. Right. And so let's talk about the. Uh... Let's talk about the All Valley Tournament. Yeah. End of season one. So, uh, let's just jump to the semifinal. So we have Hawks versus Robbie. Hawk lost. Hawk, now Hawks was wilding. Like, he, like he. Rob, I don't even care about his backwards turn, but like, you cannot kick a person in <laughs> when the match isn't even going on. Like I was like, yo, that's like you should be disqualified from. Doing karate, period, because that you could have seriously hurt that person. Yeah, and it's not like, and it's not like hurt like, oh, he like broke his arm, which he does to a person later. It's like no, you could have seriously hurt his. He you he was risking his life, and you put and you put his life in danger for no reason at all, just because you lost. And so we get to the finals, and of course. We have LaRusso coming from the stands, being the guy, like, oh, I'm going to help coach him. And then, so he's on Robbie's side. We have Johnny on Miguel's side. And Miguel is so uh, focused on winning at all costs. He, and I wasn't, how did you feel about Miguel attacking Robbie's injured arm? Well, so I didn't, that didn't really bother me. Because I'm like, it's there. Like, that's what you're supposed to do. Like, why? Why make it hard for yourself? Fight smarter, not harder. So you just going to hit his good side? No. Fight smarter, not harder. It is a conversation about... Um, well, the conversation, I think, and this leads into the final of Season 2, was winning without honor. Right. And that's what they spoke about in Season 2. And so when they said no mercy, because we re- remember we have... Uh, Johnny going in there being like no mercy being as hard headed as he is when you go into season 2 when you go into this conversation of mercy I think the tr- him trying to change his ways and him trying to become a better sensei and teach honor is something that he came into by watching him by watching uh, Miguel he- like, do that to Robbie. And see, do you, like, from just, like, my point of view, I felt like Miguel still won with honor. Like, he attacked the weak spot. Like, that's not Miguel's fault that Robbie was hurt. Like, he was just there. Like, I don't think that's not being honorable. Like, 
I think what's less honorable is for him to not attack that spot and giving him a chance to win where he shouldn't have been able he shouldn't have been able he shouldn't have even been fighting. Well like that that like if he he's coming in there with one arm, like of course I'm gonna sit here and hit him with the with his good arm and give him a chance to beat me. No, I am going all in in beating him with everything that I have been taught over the past year. Yeah. And I am implementing that into this match that you have told me how big it is. So why would I take it easy now? Yeah. Um, but let's go into season two. All right, but last, last thoughts on season one. Uh, so what would you give season one? Mm, I'd give out season one a good seven out of ten. Okay, I would give season one a ten out of ten. Just because... As a person who didn't necessarily like the Karate Kid films, uh, and I wasn't very excited for Cobra Kai, but Cobra Kai hooked me, and I was like, okay, wow, this is really good. This is this is excellent storytelling, excellent fighting. Like this is this is hitting on all cylinders. Like this, I'm all in for this. So I give Cobra Kai season one a ten out of ten. Uh yeah, let's go to season two. Season two was one of my favorite seasons. Really, it might just be my favorite season. Really, and why is that? I don't know. So season two, it centered a lot more about romance. You had the plot with Miguel and Sam and Trish and Robbie. So you have Robbie and wasn't her name Ruby? No, Robbie. no Trish. Trish, yeah. So you have Trish. You have Miguel. He just broke up with uh Sam. Sam. And so Trish just swoops in and takes him. Right. Like, and one of the things I noticed in season two was like, the women are the ones always making the move in this show. Uh-huh. It, it's just something that like consistently shows that I've just thought was always very interesting. And so you have this dynamic where you have Sam on the Miyagi-Do who sort of still likes Miguel. She, she was right. conflicted. She was with Robbie, but like, even Miguel was like, she doesn't like you at the end of it. And then you have Robbie who's trying to... They did have this dynamic of Robbie and Sam trying to hide their relationship, which didn't matter in the end because Robbie was running by the time they figure it out. And right. so it's interesting because they like, this happens over the summer and it leads up to the first day of school. And so I noticed like dominoes building up every single time and right. just making a level of complexity that was so interesting to watch. And right. so you have Johnny on one side who's building up his thing and trying to figure out his friendship. And I think sending Johnny away for that last like Cobra Kai ride with the one guy, I think that was important. I think that was good to show that Cobra Kai, no matter what, was a group of people who they were just friends and they right. had their differences, but they got along. See, and also we see not only in season two do we see the the growth of Johnny. We see Johnny still as a student and his old sensei with John Kreese. And we see him trying to cause it's like it's like definitely hard because we've all been in that situation when somebody older tries to implement their strategies and it's like, okay, the way you the way you taught is wrong and this is the way it needs to be taught now. And it's like the it's not even like the world is different. It's just like there's just certain situations where people have to be uh able to handle and the way you're handling it isn't right. And so we see Johnny being torn between old Cobra Kai and new Cobra Kai to the point where it destroys him. Mm-hmm. And so we see like it's a it's again a thing of balance. And so as Johnny's trying to balance being a sensei while keeping John Kreese at bay, he's also trying to open him with open arms. And it's like, yo, uh, you still my sensei. I'm still have your back. And we see that even when um, Johnny followed him to the VA Mm -hmm. and he was basically there and he was like, yo, I'm down and out. And John's like, cool. I got you. You still my mans. And even, and even then, but another thing we see the budding rivalry between Miguel and Robbie. And that's just a bigger a bigger issue in itself because it's basically the next generation of Johnny and Daniel. And so we see them building. But the, here's the thing. Miguel is a much better uh, martial artist than Robbie. Robbie is still very raw. He, I feel like who do you, the talent is out, there. Out of the students, who do you think 
let's do give our top ranking of who's the best out of the students. So, at uh, where we were, at what point are we ranking it? Mm, let's do end of season two, right before the fight. Uh, end of season two. So after Miguel died, after Miguel falls no, off. No, if right before the fight, right before the fight. I would say Miguel, Trish, Robbie, Hawks, Sam. You think uh you think Hawks better than Sam? Yes, I do. Mm. All right, for me, I'm probably gonna go Miguel. Sam's been practicing karate more than them, so I put Miguel, Sam. See, but Hawks. Sam Sam is afraid of karate. Like she does not really like it. She thought it was whack, and so it wasn't until she was threatened we see her use it. Well, she didn't. She initially get in just because she wanted to like save Miguel or something. Yes, and so, and so, but even then, like Miguel has been training every day, twice a day, doing everything. Like we see that we see my man's in a cement truck. Uh, it was him, Hawks, and some other guy. I forgot his name. Just moving and, the cement truck, and we like and this is this girl, is how the girl who was in Cobra Kai. What Trees, was her name? Trees. No, not Trees. The other one. The oh, black one. Can't remember her name. Yeah, she was but in there as well. We see, we see like how bad Miguel wants it, and we don't see that same level of passion from Sam until later, and that's why I give Miguel top right there. Yeah. Um. But season two was very interesting, having to explore. I think I feel like with season two they explored like Cobra Kai's that discussion of no mercy right they explored it a lot more and the relationships that cobra kai built leading up until the wild fight that we'll talk about later right. um for me though i think the thing that probably is the least interesting part of the show is just its focus on uh danny's uh car dealership see i i think that was i think that was a great uh niche in that because we see that uh, along when he's trying to build his dojo, he's letting his auto um, his auto lot slide, and it's just like okay, it's again the theme of balance. Like you can't be all in on one thing; there, your other your other part is gonna suffer. And so we we get that like right through the mix. So I like it. I like how uh, we see him going down and out. We see like. Even back to season one, we didn't talk about it a lot. With like when they drew the dick on his like uh, face on the billboard, and it's like, How okay, you, I, I get that. I, I, I get, I get the anger, but he was more angry at Johnny than what it actually did to his auto lot, and that was a problem. For me, uh, and we didn't touch on this when talking about season one, but I honestly like how they didn't have Daniel with his wife. With uh, mm. the girl from the Karate Kid, the first movie. Mm. They made her something that was... They were like, oh yeah, it just didn't work. Right. And so I think that, in general, made a change to the show that made things a bit different for everyone. Because it meant that, one, it was one less thing that uh, that you had Johnny like upset about. Right. But also it showed like growth and change in Daniel. He was like, Daniel's not the same person he was at the end of high school. And we see the same thing with Johnny and how Johnny is troubled mm -hmm. and how it took, and it was Cobra Kai that, that originally saved Johnny. And it's Cobra Kai again saving Johnny, but just in a different form. Except he's not only the leader of Cobra Kai, he is teaching it and giving it to the next generation. Yeah, uh, let's, uh, so we talked, let's talk about John Kreese. Okay. So John Kreese in season one, in season two, he comes in and he's like, yo, I'm a changed man and I want to. Well, he, well, he didn't say he was changed. He, he acted like he was changed. I don't, I don't, I don't think he said he was changed, but he was more reserved and he was like, yo, this show show, I'm just here. And I think pulling him back in. And him teaching that mer teaching that no mercy, it changes the two different dynamics of the dojo. You have on one side, you have Johnny trying to be the better man. And then on the other side, you have John Kreese trying to teach the students lessons that not necessarily they needed to learn. 
and I feel the brutal tactics. I feel like they built up an ideal of what Cobra Kai used to be like. Right. When uh, John Kreese was teaching it, and the students saw that it was a different form of Cobra Kai. Right. It was a different energy. Uh, and so I think that that a reflection of that is why he eventually put out the mercy rule. How do you uh, going into the fight? Let let's let's break this down. So the fight starts with uh, it starts the night before that. Bro, first of all, uh, let me just say this fight is nuts. It because, is nuts it because is cr- listen, I as a person who was in who went to a big high school like this. I cannot imagine a school, a school wide fight that started on like the first floor and ended on like the fourth floor. It like that was... is impossible. Like it's just like if a school with like three thousand kids, there's no way that there's gonna be a fight and everybody's following it because it just like it doesn't like it's going to attract people, of course, but the whole school, even <laughs> just like. The group say was like attached to it, and the my other my one issue with Cobra Kai is that karate is this school's soul and blood. Now we both went to high school. We actually both went to the same high school. Now we went to a big. It was a big basketball school, but there was also football. There was also theater. Well, there was also like um. Debate. There also was a uh, constitutional law. So it's like, you mean to tell me that All Valley only has karate? There's no other activities? I think they do, but I think what happens is when Miguel beats up the bullies, everybody gets interested and see, in karate. And see, that's crazy because that's not even real life because everybody has their focus. You see a person do their best at karate. If you're the best at basketball or football or debate, you're not going to be like, y'all, all right, this is it. I'm over this. I'm going to karate. Yeah. But um, for me, looking at this, uh, let's break down the fight. It starts the day before at the party where you have uh, Sam kiss kisses Miguel when she's drunk. I Here's the thing when it comes to the whole Sam debate of whether or not she was wrong. Like she was wrong. She, she was, was wrong. She, she was, was wrong. wrong. The story of behind it was so like paper thin. Like you have, Oh, Miguel returned the medal and Robbie pretended like, uh, he did. That, that's not paper thin, but that, that's so like, okay. But to but me, that, that's that is not, not like, that's not like, Oh, I'm gonna go cheat on you levels of a secret. No, but here's the thing that just shows a lot of it come like a thing is balance. And so she's thinking Robbie is this great guy who, uh, who's had like a troubled past, but he's getting himself right. But we see him, Robbie, seem jealous of Miguel and how that even affected his relationship with Sam. And it's like he wasn't protecting Sam. He was protecting himself. And he even said that when he told Sam. And so it's just like we see how Robbie would act. And it's just like, he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't having uh, the the Miyagi Dojo's best interest. He was having his best interest. Yeah. And so that that I don't think that's paper thin. And so, but what I do think is paper thin is for Sam to kiss another man while she's in a relationship, while she knows that that man is in another relationship. And so yeah. that to me, that like that shows dishonor. And we see how balance plays a part into that. Because Sam, because Miguel was like, yo, this is wrong. I'm with Treese. Like, you wilding. And then Treese sees it, and she's like, aw, I'm going to just fuck this bitch up. <laughs> and so that's what happens. And I don't think, and I think Treese was very valid in her feelings. Because she knew that Miguel still had feelings for Sam. And so it's like, okay, you are approaching on my territory, which I've clearly claimed, which you know I've claimed. And me and him are good, and I don't want you and him to be good. And me, I'm protecting my best interest, which is to eliminate you. All right. But, like, so going into the fight. So we have that. And then Trish doesn't show up on the first day. She purposely knows Miguel's looking out for her, trying to find her. So she shows up late, breaks into the auto room, and says, Oh, we catching hands after class. And then you have Trish and Sam fighting while Robbie tries to 
tries to stop them after figuring out that after Trish spills the bean that uh, she kissed Miguel, and then Miguel like attacks Robbie because he thinks he's attacking Trish, which sets off a domino effect because you notice these like rivalries like right. building up throughout the season. You have Brandon and Hawk who've been doing it. You have um, right. those two boys. I don't know. Oh wait, no. Names. Remember we we even skipped over. Hawks breaking Brandon's arm. No, that's season three. Is that season? That's three? season three. Okay, all right. All right, so you have those two boys. There's, like, the black one and the white one. They're pretty big. They sort of switched yeah. up. The one who went to yeah, Miyagi-Do Miyagi. and the one who didn't. You have them. You have the two kids who have a fight rivalry. And so yeah. you have these rivalries building up all through season two, and then you just have this damn snap, which follows, like, it, it has to be, like, 20 minutes of a fight. Like, they go from the hallway to the main entrance right. up to the second floor. Like, it was wild. Like and, and my thing is, yo, y'all are, like, fighting, like, for a long time. Y'all not tired? Like, yes. I was tired looking at them fighting for 20 minutes. I'm like, fam, y'all have been going at it. Y'all How do y'all keep break? getting up? Like, the one thing when uh, Brandon, Brandon was with the Miyagi uh, Dojo, and we see him and Hawks fight. And Hawks is like the big bully guy now. He's the big guy. And we see them and Hawks is like, yo, I'm going to get you. And then when Brandon slams him into the trophy case, I'm like, that's like poetic justice. Because for so long, we've seen Hawks deny who he really was. And again, it's the thing of balance. And we're seeing Hawks deny who he really is as a person and we see Brandon like, yo, remember where you came from? Like, I'm your man. I'm like your best friend. I'm your man. We spent the night together. Uh, all this other stuff. And so when that happens, we see, oh, and so when it's like. Because the night before, he did a like a comedy scene making fun of him. He was right. like, this man is mad fake. Like, right. He, he used to. And it's crazy how and people so, all just forgot. Like, they and were we like, see, oh. And we see Hawks with this breaking point because. Him and Moon broke up as well mm-hmm. because, and he he even got the tattoo for her, and she was like, "I didn't tell you to get that." Like, and then he turns into a grim reaper, and so we see even when he tries to be sensitive and love, like he just comes splashing back in his face, and so he turns more towards the creed of Cobra Kai: no mercy, attack first, attack first. What's it? Attack first, attack fast, no strike mercy. First, strike first, strike first, strike, strike hard, hard stri- no mercy. No, strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. And so we see him indoctrinate that in his own life and even outside of Cobra Kai and karate. This fight was what? Like, it was so crazy watching this. So let's just get to the good part. When Robbie kicked Miguel over. The over the balcony, I was like, yo, that was OD. That cover, yeah, I think he didn't need to do that. Well, it goes down to Robbie showed him mercy, and we'll talk about this more in season three. But like, Robbie shows him mercy. No, Miguel shows up. Robbie, yeah, M- Miguel shows Robbie mercy, and then Robbie just kicks him for no reason. Like, he had lost the fight, and he was like, no, I he chose violence because you have. Miyagi Do won this fight. Like they won, like every single fight except Miguel. Miguel, Miguel, Miguel had his, Miguel, Miguel had his, his own. Miguel, Miguel had his, his own fight. because once again we got to think. Miguel has been doing this for longer than everybody. So he and he beat Robbie before, and so it's like, yo, I can do this. I'm better than you. Like I'm the man. Like don't forget. Like I can give you these hands. And so I don't want you to forget anything. And so Miguel beats Robbie. Everybody else is on the ropes, but Miguel held his own. And the only reason why Miguel broke his back was because Robbie took a cheap shot at him. When Miguel showed mercy. And the only reason why Miguel showed mercy was because Johnny, his sensei, was like, yo, do you want to win without honor? And it's just like the whole thing of balance again. Yeah, I, I that was crazy. Even uh, Sam won her fight with Trace. She, uh, she got hurt, but she won in the end. She did not win at the end. Yes, she Trish did. Lost. She, she threw lost. Trish and then down but, the stairs. <laughs> I guess. I guess. I don't know. I think that was a wash. But let's move on. What did you give season two? 
Season two, my, that's a nine out of ten. That's my favorite season. Yeah, I'll give it a ten out of ten. I think uh, season two was so strong that you just it like it blew season one out of the water. Yeah, and I think season three needed to calm down a little bit, just because season one was turned, season two was turned, and chapter three we see world building and we see like reflections. And I think what was best about season three is that. We got the original origin of Cobra Kai. And so yes. we go into the background of John Kreese, who was um, a war vet. Well, basically, he was a loser. Yeah. Like, we were introduced to him. Um, they do the good thing with the camera, and we see, like, some jock from, like, Stanford or somewhere. And he's like, yeah, I did this, I did that. It's like, we see the arrogance of John Kreese in that uh, teenager. But really, it turned out that Kreese was... The bus boy, and he was the one wiping, and he was the one getting beat up. And yeah. didn't they say his mom, like, killed herself or yeah, something? Yeah, his mom killed himself, killed herself. And so we see John Kreese, and when he picks up the army thing, we're like, yo, this is it, this is it. But no, it's not it. So he gets a girlfriend. Uh, he falls in love. He goes overseas. He's a military man. He's training. And then his uh, commanding officer was like, yo, I got a special task for you. Only a select few is for this. Um, do this, do this, do this, and then you'll be the man. And he's like, okay, sign me up. I just want to defend my country. And then, you know, that's where he learns, because he teaches him, uh, they don't call it karate, but whatever yeah. the Vietnam are. And so that's the origin of where this came from. Right. And then they end up in this snake pit. Where they well, are they get captured mm-hmm. because Kreese was showing mercy and trying to look out for his fellow uh, man and was like, yo, I can't blow this up because my man's is right there. And so they end up getting caught. And so they're all in the they're all in a cage. They're all in a prison cage together while the uh, Viet Cong are trying to choose who goes out and who fights against who. And it took and it took um, the commanding officer versus it wasn't supposed to be against uh, John Kreese. It was supposed to be against his boy. But mm-hmm. his boy was like scared. He was like, yo, I don't want to do this. Well, because he knew he was going to lose. Yeah, and Kreese was like, yo, I got you. I'll stand up for you. And so they're fighting. In the middle of their fight, um, their rescue squad comes and rescues them. And he and Kreese wins the fight. He has his commanding officer over the pit of of snakes. And he's like, yo, pick me up, man. Like, like we got this. Over. We good. We, we good. Won. And, and then Kreese John Kreese is like, like nah, no, finishing no, the, no mercy. Like he taught the me. fight. And so that and so that is in his blood and in his personality now. And so he takes that back to California, back to All Valley. And then we see and we see who and we see as uh as Johnny kind of breaks away from the dojo, as he's like, cause this world is in basically like a tailspin. We see his son has ran away, his favorite pupils in a hospital. Um, John Kreese takes over for him and John Kreese is, and John Kreese is going after the killers, basically. He's going after what the original Cobra Kai that he started was about. Yeah. And so for me, the story of John Kreese, that story of mercy, mercifully not taking things. I think that. I think the horror of war is sort of the building blocks of Cobra Kai. Right. And that's why it's both uh, something that brings people in, but also shuts people off. And so it can be destructive, but you see, like, with uh, Johnny's pastor friend, it can also build you up. Right. And so we see how Cobra Kai has broken down Johnny to the fact he's only uh, strike first, start strike hard, no mercy. But we see also how... Cobra Kai has built up Johnny uh, Lawrence, by mistake, into, like, the person he is today and knowing, like, what he taught was wrong. And we see and we see one of his first conversation, his first conversation with Miguel. And I think that, that was probably my most favorite part of the series because it just, like, happens because life just sometimes sucks sometimes. And so we see Miguel, he was like, yo, I showed you, I showed your son mercy. Like, I yeah. beat him. I showed him mercy. I did what you taught me to do. And now I may be never, I may 
never be able to walk again. That, and, th- and this is your fault because you taught me to show mercy. If I would have listened to the original Cobra Kai and not show mercy, I wouldn't be in this position right now. That that conversation overall had so much rawness in it. Right. It was so good. And so you see, like, you see Johnny in, like, a tailspin. Right. And he sort of has to build himself back up in season two and also get the respect of, um, get the respect of uh, Miguel back. Right. And, and that, and that's also a, another thing of balance when it was like, he was worried about getting Miguel's respect back. He needed to get his entire dojo back. And we see with his absence, we see John Kreese come in. And take over and get like the real killers and the real, um, and the real like people there, not the real people, but like, and we see him get like Trish back, who's on probation, who's like, y'all got expelled, I'm down bad, and we see him go get even like the bullies back, and that and that was and that's very interesting because we see when they're doing the karate, um, the karate fights against each other. In the in the dojo, and we see one of the Cobra Kai lose, and Chris was like, "What you doing? What, you get back in line? Nah, you get out. You lost." And so we see that, and we see the bully who uh, bullied Hawks like, "Oh man, his lip is still messed up." And we see um, Hawks like, "Yo, I am a killer, and not we, only will I kill, I am here to destroy." We do see that because when they first come in, you can see in Hawks' face he has that fear. It's like. They're bullies. They're going to make fun of me. And then they do it. And then you see the determination on his face. Like, when he took off the gi, I was like, oh, it's going down. Right. He was like, no, I'm not even doing this as Cobra Kai. I'm doing this as Hawk. It's going down. And so I think the most interesting part about John Kreese's Cobra Kai this season is you did have the secret war between, like, Sam and Cobra Kai like, trying to fight each other in the background of right. the school. And you notice how Cobra Kai changes things. They're like, oh, we need to be more sneaky with it. We need to make sure that we um don't get caught doing things we're not supposed to do. Right. And you see that um the just they have that fight in the middle of season two that in the laser area, which basically destroys Sam. Like, you well, see Sam. Well, Sam has PTSD from the original fight. Of, in the school. And it's just because she wasn't prepared. And so we see that fear with Tris. And even though you said Sam won that fight, Trish is winning because Tris is living rent free in Sam's mind. Yeah. It's not the other way around. Sam isn't living in Trish's mind. Trish is living in Sam's mind. She even has a scar on her arm to prove it. Yeah. And I think the thing that probably messed up the the so they have hawk break brandon's arm brandon by the way had a glow up in season two my man went from like nerd to just making out with the prettiest girl in school right like that man had a glow up and so you had hawk break his arm and there was the bullying and stuff but that was when you first started to see hawk question the side he was on right because now hawk is like that used to be my man's. Like, we and, were friends. But we also see how, remember, remembering the indoctrine of Cobra Kai, it's like, yo, you was my man's, but you not Cobra Kai. And you don't, and you don't represent Cobra Kai in the way I represent Cobra Kai. And that is where John, John Kreese uh, latches onto and he's like, yo, I'm pure power. I'm pure muscle. And this is what Cobra Kai is. And we see Johnny and he's like, yo, man, we can be back and peaceful and they're like nah i don't want nothing to do with you and another thing that we have dropped the ball with is um daniel larusso Mm -hmm. um he goes he goes and finds the truth of miyagi Do. he goes to japan and so but before that the reason why he went to japan was because his auto lot was in the gutter and it wasn't for his former salesman who he lost telling him like yo um the other dealer uh, signed this exclusive deal with Japan, and he's going to sell auto. He's going to be the one to sell all of Japanese autos from now on. And he's like, oh, that's all who we sell. And we see him down, down and out, and he's like, yo, I'm betting on myself. And he's he goes out to Japan, and they're like, they're basically like, nah, we already signed the deal. And it took him. He was like, okay, well that's cool. And it took him going to Miyagi's home hometown. 
and really connecting with the roots. And he's realized like gentrification has hit that place hard. And so he goes and he sees his his old love interest, and he's like, "Yeah." I don't I'm... even remember this part of the movie though. Yeah, I don't remember that movie. It was it was Karate Kid three. I, I could be wrong, but uh, and so he and then he finds his old Japanese rival, and he like and him and him fight, and he realizes that his rival was holding back on him, or he his rival has learned so much more than him, and when he like hits him, and he's like disabling him he's like bam 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 like damn i can't move so yeah this is real miyagi well, i don't know it, what you, it, you No, he told him he was like he didn't tell you everything right. he didn't learn all parts of miyagi though right. and the story was that when they were having uh they were at war i think it was with china or mongolia yeah the miyagi do senseis had to come up with techniques and it's still a defensive form of fighting it's still just saying uh, you're taking away your uh, your opponent's ability to fight you. So, but here's the thing with the... Because it was sort of like a magic trip. And I think this is definitely the Netflix level money showing that like, oh, we finally get to send people to like Japan and see what they do. And so I think for me, the thing that was the most interesting about this... Um, about this uh about this duel was it it shows that he still has uh things to learn and that i think is important is to just show that daniel son doesn't know everything but he's still able to do things and then when daniel comes back and he's faced with the fact that his family is basically in shatters and now his wife is like attacking him i think going back and trying to find different ways to get rid of cobra kai is an interesting prospect what i will say is the police don't exist in cobra kai right like they they don't do anything like they're out here threatening fighting people like they run up in somebody's house and beat people up and you're like oh no we gotta go and do this karate stuff like it's it's interesting that like the police aren't doing anything Right, um, and it's like crazy that. Well, we also got to think about um, what happened. It was happened in Calabasas, and in Calabasas, the uh, the time to get to that area is like thirty five minutes, and so I could get why a fight would happen for that long. But I will say that Larusso was very he was very cool with people breaking into his dojo. Like, if I, I would have been up very upset with that. Like, fam, y'all did this. Like, I don't know. Like, I should sue y'all. Like, what's wrong with you? (laughs) Like, he was very like, nah, this is disrespectful. Y'all disrespecting my dojo and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to clean it up. And it's like, fam, they disrespected your dojo. And you the one cleaning it up. Like, what's wrong with you? And we even seen that in the last fight. Oh, they at my house, blah, blah, blah. And then, so we see the fight. And then we see Robbie. Uh, let's just circle back to Robbie. Because Why Rob? So they had Robbie in jail for this season, most right. of it, and he learns to strike first, and then he comes out and he goes to John Kreese because he knew that Daniel and his father would not have taught him that. And but so like, he and so he wanted to sharpen his image. He wanted to sharpen his power, and he knew that the Miyagi way and now Cobra Kai in the. The, Johnny way. The eagle. What was the eagle fang? The eagle fang way was not the way. And so he well, he goes to Cobra Kai because he knows you strike first, strike hard, no mercy. And that's where he's going to learn to perfect that. Uh do you wanna get to the last fight? Yeah. Let so we have this day where you have um they bring back the original love interest <laughs> from uh from the karate kid. Right. And she's like, you know, teaching Johnny and they're having their moments. And then they sort of have this marination where they finally figure out, Johnny and Danny finally figure out their relationship. And they can start to work together. Right. While in the background, their kids are getting beat up like nobody's and so, business. Before that, we see um, we see the two, Miyagi and Eagle Fane, decide to merge because... They realize, yo, we are outclassed, we're outmatched, we need to merge need to the be numbers. Able. Yeah, and so not the numbers, but they just need the skill and practice. And so 
when Cobra Kai attacks the LaRusso residents, we see why they're outclassed. Just because the Miyagi Dojo and the Eagle Fang, they just haven't, they're just not there yet. Well, like, they, the, they, the, the, the experience is not there with them. And well, so you we have see to them. remember is Mi- Miyagi Do, one, was out for like three months. Right, and so... And, and then we even saw Miguel, who's probably the best in the series, getting beat up. Like, because, he was because my man just learned how to walk again. Like, <laughs> yeah. he should not have been fighting anyone. And so we're seeing that, and we see why they're losing. And, and we see why it was important. And then we have these uh, the important shift of Hawk. I think Hawk... Changing his legion was probably the most important shift in the See, season. I don't think that was an important shift. I think that was more of a cop out because that still was like, okay, you know what you're doing is wrong, but now you're like, okay, I don't want to be here no more. Like, I see how wrong this is, and instead of making it right, I'm just gonna be on their side. And that's why, like, I thought that was a punk move for him. Honestly, like, I think him- if you want to be full Cobra Kai, be full Cobra Kai, but don't just be like, oh man, they just beat up my man's. They- all my people getting beat up. All right, I'm gonna just go on the other side and help them. No, you have to pay for what you did, and that's a that's the thing. It's called balance. So I do think this is going to hurt Hawks in the future in season four. We're gonna see it hurt him. Well, he's he's making this change because he looked at the people around him. Because one of the things you have to remember is the people who he was fighting with they were the bullies. They right. were his bullies. So he looked around and he saw the people who he was fighting. And the people who were fighting with him, and he said, this isn't where I need to be. Right. And so you have him and Brandon have their fight, which they actually fought pretty good. They were putting in the work. And then seeing that Miguel gets the power to beat that guy up again. And then you have, of course, the fight between Trish and Sam, which Sam deserves these hands. We got to be honest. Like, I, as much as I'm like, Tris is going pretty crazy, between Sam, one, kissing Miguel, and then two, getting back with Miguel, I mean, she kind of deserves all the beatings that she's getting. It's, it's pretty bad. It's not looking right. good. Right. And so, and then we have, at the end, you have, uh, so Johnny comes home, he's like, all right, I'm trying to try to get in a relationship. Let me get with this. Uh, Miguel's mom, and then he sees Miguel was beat up, and he goes to the dojo, which, why these people are always in the dojo at, like, 9 o'clock at night? It has to be, like, 1, 2 in the morning at that point. Like, because you had Johnny, he, they went to the park, it was already night, then they went to a party, then they came home, and they had, so this is, like, 1, 2 in the morning. I don't know why John Kreese is there. And so you have him, John Kreese, there training his sub boy, and John... I don't know what John think he did in order to get... Because John Kreese's goal has always been Johnny. Right. He's he's like, you're my best student. I need And it's Johnny. like, he wanted to convert Johnny back to Cobra Kai. Back to, back to the original Cobra Kai, not this watered down Cobra Kai that he was seeing that Johnny was teaching. And so then you have Johnny beat up John Kreese. Like, he won that fight. Right. And yeah, his son convinced him not to like kill John Kreese. But then his John Kreese takes that moment to try to John Kreese and his son. Johnny fights his son because the son is being hard headed. Here's Beats my his son's ass. Yeah. Threw, threw my man to the trophy case like, bro, you're not even worth this. And then John Kreese takes that moment, gets an advantage on Johnny. And then Daniel's son shows up. Here's the thing. Daniel proceeds to use what he learned to beat him. And then John Kreese is like, oh, let's have a let's have this tournament. Why do they say yes to that tournament? It's ego. It's ego. Like, it's pure. So here's the I'm thing, a, though. I'm going to do this. What is John Kreese's? You just lost to both of these people. But here's the thing. John Kreese's students are better than Ego, Fane, and Miyagi. But so John, that's why he's like, okay, y'all can beat me. Your students can't beat my students. And we all know that. And so that's what it comes down to. But and, I don't think they are. No, but I... Well, you got to think about it. Because think who's all on Cobra Kai right now. It's like, you have Trish. He has, the, he, has the, he has the killers right now. He has Trish. He has, like, all the bullies. But uh, here's so the thing, he, though. And so... Miguel and they've been beat doing those bullies. Long. No, okay. Miguel beat those bullies two years ago before he broke his back. 
And then he beat him again after he broke his back in the fight of the house. Nah, he barely beat... No, he was losing. And then he won. No, <laughs> he barely won. So that's what I'm saying, like... Sam is definitely better than Trish, though. No, Shannon but here's the thing. No, Sam isn't better than Trish because Trish lives in Sam's head. Like, Sam has PTSD. I said this earlier. So you can't say maybe karate skills Sam is better than Trish, but psychologically, Trish has the edge over Sam. And that's what it means. So let's say, like, if I say I'm better than you, but you're better than me, but I keep telling yo, I'm better than you, I'm better than you, I'm better than you, and you start to internalize that, you could be way better than me at something. But if I say I'm better than you, you're going to believe, and you start to believe that, I'm going to be the better person. But because she doesn't believe I, it anymore. She stood up for herself. No, again. she barely. No. Trish, But Trish has always believed she was better. And that's the issue. That's why she's always had problems with Sam. Yeah, but I just, I don't see, um, I, I don't, Sam's definitely going to get better. What I will say is now you have a different Cobra Kai. Right. And we're is, going to see that. Uh, so just lastly, what would you give this season? Eight. Yes, I'll give this eight out of ten as well. Uh, what are you looking forward to seeing in season four? Mm. I think the interesting, the weird dynamic that we have with the four lovers of Trish, Miguel, Sam, and Roddy. Robbie. Robbie is, it's getting a bit weird at this point. So I'm hoping they just sort of finish the storyline because it's just getting weird at this point. Um, I am excited to see what Hawk does because Hawk is actually pretty good. I, he's a pretty good character. I like Hawk. Uh, and that's pretty much it. What about you? Uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, of course, I'm looking forward to the tournament. I'm also looking forward to Miguel's recovery and seeing if he will be back to his old self and seeing what, and actually I would love to see Miguel learn what the, what Daniel learned from the Miyagi in, uh, Japan. So I'm loving to see that. I want to see the relationship between Daniel and Johnny Blossom. And how that's going to work with two senseis who are who are who are still fierce rivals. Yes. What do you do? You think they're just gonna call themselves Miyagi Do? No, I think it'll be something in the middle because uh, Johnny says Miyagi Do doesn't sound badass. So I think they're going to find a find a centerpiece somewhere. It'll probably be like it will probably be like Ego Fame Miyagi or something crazy like that. But uh, we'll see. But once again, thank you for listening. Uh, follow me on all social media platforms. At Flow My Hero. Follow Meta on all social media platforms. At Metro Meta 26. Make sure you're following the brands at 26 and Glencoe Media Network. On YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We have a bunch of content coming out this week. So stay tuned. And until next time, peace. See ya. Actually, until next time, strike first, strike hard. No mercy. Except for when you need mercy. <laughs>